let me start next section. We have section devoted to solid state materials, electronic devices and integrated circuits. So our first presentation is by Dr. Maricela Meneses. The title is White Electroluminescence of Silicon Scoop Oxide Oxycorbide Films obtained by hot wire CVD using vinyl Silan. Thank you, Tom, for the presentation. Um, I talk about what is the problem of oxycarbonyl silicon film obtained the cold white CBD using the Michigan. The content of this presentation. No, it's coming. Yeah. Okay, the content of the, uh, this presentation is introduction, experimental part, results, and discussion, conclusion, and reference. Introduction. Well, the integration of autoelectronics and electronic device in the same and the same uh, substrate using the technology CMOS is very important to application in photonics. One device important of electronics is light emitting field. This device is very important. Uh, this emits light when the current passes across, across it and convert it. Electrical energy and light energy. The color of the device depends on the material that it made. And the table one shows the some example. However, the white light is necessary a mixture of color red, green, and blue. In the other case, is necessary nano photos or nanocrystal and these are excited with blue light and UV LED to obtain white light. However, it is very important to obtain white light from silicon material. Some examples Are shown in the table too. We can observe some material such as silicon, silicon rich silicon oxide, silicon nanocrystal, silicon nitride, silicon oxycarbide. This first material is important of same high energy. We observe carbon or silicon oxycarbide is obtain a low temperature. Additionality, this material present low electrical constant. Additionally, present high thermal and mechanical stability, white optical band gap. Thank you, that is possible obtain emission from blue and near infrared. Additionality, this material could be applied in light emitting diode, solar cell, photodiodes, thin film transistor, and the others. In this work, we have light emitting diode. Additionality, oxycarbon silicon is possible to obtain um, using organic precursors, such as penicillamo, tetractor silicato, methyl tetrachlor tetrachylosilano, monometilsilano, is very important the organic precursor because this avoid and use of the toxic materials. Additionality, this could be obtained in different techniques using uh, silicon technology, such as hot wire CBD, Plasma-enhanced chemical vapor deposition, 
siliconium implantation sputum. Each system has different properties. However, a hot wax CBD is possible to obtain uh, films at low temperature, using for films, face ground. The very important is this oil, low cost. Well, the other system is necessary to obtain uh, equipment with high cost. Again, in this world, we work with our CBT techniques. Experimental part. In this part, we uh, show the system that we use. It. This system is principal in form for um, chamber reaction, mass flow control, and turbo molecular and mechanical pumps. And this picture show the inter of the chamber where observe that holder, substrate, gas band, and flow gas, and important catalyst. And this picture show the, the formation of the things. The, in this case, tantalum filament was used. This filament is at its high temperature, um, precursor of gas are dissociated and the nucleation are, are absorbed on the substrate and form the thin films. We use some penicillin. And this um, molecule is very important because it's short. Then with high temperature, as possible, the dissociation. And additionally, uh, we use oxygen as possible to uh, modify the properties. And, the, and this notes show the condition for the obtained position fields. We use a temperate substrate e equal to 100 degrees Celsius, uh, while temperature equal 1,800 the results we time 20 minutes and pressure equals 0 point torus. We use uh, hydrogen, penicillin, and oxygen equal um, 10, 5, uh, 0 point 5 SCCM. Then we uh, obtain the device. And we use uh, metal insulator of semiconductor. First, we obtain um, the oxycarbonyl film, film on p type crystal silicon. Then, aluminum was deposited um, on back side of the crystal silicon. Then, um, uh, 100 nanometers of the indium tin oxide was deposited using a sputtering system using 40 watts. Finality, uh, the device was definite using a photographic process. The area was 0.025 per centimeters. And feature two show the um, the device. Result and discussion. Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy was um, made to study the chemical bonds of the two films as the positive in winter man alarm. Uh, and this they both show the different uh, band absorption with their what number. Uh, however, it's very important to uh, show the comparison of the two films. Principality is we can observe silicon ox oxygen hydrogen band and carbon hydrogen band increase in temperature. Will uh, decrease, sorry, decrease 
for uh, the pan relation oxygen, oxygen hydrogen, they increase wind temperature. Uh, in this case, the wind temperature in this um, band, of this bonding, uh, hydrogen is to break and it's an endless um, bonding with the oxygen. It's probability that because this band increases. Atomic force, atomic, atomic force microscopy uh, was made to observe the uh, morphology of the films. This film was used to activate films and the device. And then it's important to know the average rows. And this uh, was obtained at 1.88 nanometers. And with the thickness equal to uh, 100. <laughs> 46 nanometers. We can observe a small difference between two the films. Energy dispersing spectroscopy and show three peaks relation silicon, oxygen, and carbon. Additionally, additionally um, was obtained the atomic concentration, where we can observe silicon, oxygen, and carbon present similar continue because uh, the temperature of the ter thermal is not enough to um, show a change in this case. However, from FTR, show the change of the bond. Additionality uh, was obtained the uh, scanning electron microscopy, where it agreed when the film uh, the film are uniform photoluminescence. And feature say, six show sorry. The feature six show uh, a broad band of the forty. 450 nanometers. This present um, band relation um, blue and is probably the relation with weak oxygen bond. The other band important is in 400. The um, uh, relation and neutral oxygen vacancy, relation oxygen deficient centers. It, another probably contribution in relation no bridge of oxygen hole centers. Electroluminescence. In this picture, show the comparison of photoluminescence and electroluminescence. Photoluminescence is a uh, the active film is red line, and where the electroluminescence is purple line. We observe that this one is the same. And in relation with oxygen bond, additionality, probability, uh, and there are contribution neutral oxygen vacancy. Additionality, the red band relation at no green of oxygen fault center in relation a silano group two. In this picture, show the emission of the device when the voltage equal to 28 volts with a current for million volts. We can observe was possible obtain was like emission all the all areas of the device. Additionally, to uh, probability uh, the contribution of hydrogen on well, um, and this feature show the current density and voltage of the device. We will observe the ratio, uh, and this ratio is with injection. 
of the carrier, redistribution, and how the conduction of the carrier. In this part, show electromagnetic center. What's of, uh, in this world show only two um, curves relation of the device in the same device. But it's very important because show the device it present electroluminescent more than one. To understand the behavior of the device uh, was obtained the mechanism conduction. The mechanism conduction um, was adjusted in different um, methods. Will be uh, please uh, next to okay. Or please. Thank you. Where uh, we use it and the cure to obtain the mechanism conduction, where we can observe that uh, in this ratio, all trams are fine. When increase the current, all trams are completely final. Then the current is fully controlled by a space chart limited current that limit on the future injection of the precarious on the film. Then uh, the property of the this mentioning is um, the electrical uh, properties of active film depend the the device protectors. Next. Please. Conclusion. Well, what was possible obtain while photoluminescence obtained from oxycarbon silicon using organic precursor? In this case, in the final. The thermal alliance uh, decreased the photoluminescence. However, was very important to active radioactive center that would be contribute to electroluminescence of the device. The photoluminescence um, would be relation of different depths. Well, electroluminescence was obtained all areas. And in this, why electroluminescence was attributed a different uh, recombination of the factors, such as weak oxygen bonding, neutral oxygen vacuums, and no green of oxygen of all centers. And the, the conduction mechanism was um, a space share limited current. Finality and these results show it that oxycarbonyl silicon obtained the homeware CBD from Vinicirano is a candidate for application in what like an interview. Right. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, we have only two minutes to maybe one question in in online, anybody wants to ask? I don't see anybody. Okay, uh, one question. Yeah. What is the role of carbon in this system? So you say about photoluminescence and uh, all line correspond to different defects related to oxygen, but what, how about carbon? What is the role? Oh, okay. The initial in the in the ratio uh, is attributed to neutral oxygen vacancy. Relation oxygen or carbon is is um, 
probably to defects. And uh, carbon in relation to uh, near of uh, the blue, near uh, blue emission, then it's possible to obtain the emission in relation to the carbon defect. So this is <clears throat> what I can say in uh, silicon carbide uh, yeah. system. Okay. It's very important the, the carbon because in, in this if the films uh, have a very low um, content of carbon, the emission is not possible. Mm. It's important the, the carbon. Okay. In the okay. Thank you. And uh, about this uh, photoluminescence, what is the difference of intensity in photoluminescence before and after heating? In, in different is um, one or the more or know, less one, one or the, one. because it's not put here in this slide because it's very important the uh, principality uh, the position, position and, and broad of the band. Okay, okay thank you. Other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So, next presentation will be by Dr. Juan Ramon Ramos Serrano. As my title is uh, DC and direct pattern ectofin film as electrode in light emitting diodes based on amorphous uh, silicon carbide. Uh, Please, Doctor. Yes. Should how to start the presentation? One moment, please. Mm -hmm. Can you see the presentation? Oh, yes. Okay. I'm going to start. Yeah. Okay. Have some technical problems. <laughs> well, thanks for introducing me. Uh, some results obtained in the microelectronics lab at the INAOE. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, to to talk about the DC and RF spotted in films. Uh, for light emitting diodes based on amorphous silicon carbide. Uh, this is the outline of this presentation. Um, I'm going to start with an introduction. I'll talk about the importance of transparent electrodes in the development of electronic devices and the motivation for this work. Next, in the experimental procedure, I'll describe the deposition parameters of the ETO thin films using the DC and RF power supplies. Uh, also in this section, I'll describe the implemented light uh, emission structure based on amorphous silicon carbide. Uh, next, I'll present the results related to the ETO thin films characterization, mainly their uh, transmittance and resistivity. Uh, after after this, I present the optical and electrical properties of the implemented structures. And finally, I present some uh, conclusions of this work. Uh, well, uh, century of electronic devices such as thin films, transistors, uh, 
photovoltaic panels, uh, touch screen, uh, LEDs, and photodetectors require the use of transparent electrodes. Uh, different transparent conducting oxide or TCOs, uh, such as aluminum doped zinc oxide and fluorine doped zinc oxide, are used for these kinds of applications. Uh, but today, the indium tin oxide is one of the most used TCO due to the to its optical and electrical properties. Uh, ITO is an N-type semiconductor with a low resistivity, and ITO has a wide optical band gap higher than three electron volts. Uh, currently, it's uh, possible to obtain it by different techniques, as CBD, uh, PLD, spray pyrolysis, and sputtering. Uh, among these techniques, the sputtering is widely used for ITO deposition due to the capability to obtain uniform films in a large area, even at an industrial scale. Uh, another advantage is that the deposition can be doing uh, at low temperature. Uh, what is the motivation for this work? Uh, in previous work, we reported the implementation of light emitting diodes by, based on amorphous silicon carbide using uh, an ethothin film as transparent electrode. The ethothin films were deposited by sputtering using a 2 inch target with a RF power of 150 watts. Uh, however, these deposition parameters show with some drawback, such as instability in the plasma generation, excessive accumulation of dust, uh, damage to the surface of the ITO target, and a reduction in the use, uh, useful life of the target. Uh, figure one uh, we shows the dust accumulation in the target after a deposition of only five minutes. Uh, well, in this work, uh, we study the optical and electrical properties of the ethotin films deposited by sputtering using uh, TC and RF source and their influence in the performance of light emitting diodes based on amorphous silicon carbide. Uh, for this work, we use uh, low deposition power using the TC and RF, RF source. Uh, the deposition parameters are described in table one. Uh, as we can observe, we use it lower DC powers, and this is because it has been reported a ha higher deposition rate with a DC source. So to obtain films with similar thickness using both source, we use lower DC powers. Uh, figure 2 shows the sputtering system using for this work. Uh, figure 3 shows the scheme of the implement uh, pin diode structures. The different layers were deposited by the PCBD technique. Uh, in table 2, show the deposition parameters and some physical properties of each layer. Uh, figure 4 shows the employed uh, PCBD system. Uh, well, to obtain the film thickness by profilometry, uh, square shaped partners were defined by a photolithography process using a 7 to 1 AHA solution to etch in the data films. The resistivity of the films was determined from the sheet resistance obtained by four, uh, by four probe uh, measurements. Uh, uh, and the resistance were obtained by uh, following this relation. Uh, table 3 summarizes the obtaining values. Uh, we can observe uh, that the resistivity show close values at different deposition powers uh, without any trend for DC or RF deposition, being these at the same magnitude order. Uh, in figure 6 shows the transmittance spectra. A, a trend to reducing transmittance with increasing the deposition power can be observed in both cases. 
This is mainly related to, to an increase in the film thickness. Um, the ETO films deposited with RF source shows a higher transmittance per percentage with a more pronunci pronunciate uh, absorption edge. Uh, to know how the deposition power influences the transparency of the films, uh, regardless of the thickness, we calculate the absorption coefficient. Uh, figure 7 shows the absorption coefficient obtained from the transmittance spectra. Uh, the films obtained with DC power, uh, power supplies, uh, show higher absorption coefficient. This can be related to a higher oxygen deficiency in the films deposited by DC. Uh, in addition, the optical gap of the films was determined using the TAUC plot. The insets in figure 7 uh, shows this plot. Uh, an increase in the gap energy can be observed when increasing the deposition power in both cases. Uh, however, the films deposited with the RF source shows higher gap energy. Uh, this may be related also to the higher oxygen deficiency in the films deposited with the DC power supply. Okay. Uh, figure 8 shows the XRD partners of the ETO films uh, with thickness of 100 nanometers. These films were deposited at uh, 15 watts and 25 watts for DC and RF source respectively. Uh, the films uh, were used as electrodes in the implement LEDs. The RF deposit film only shows a broad peak related to an amorphous structure, while the film deposit by DC shows diffraction peaks uh, corresponding to indium oxide uh, with a crystalline structure. Uh, however, the film deposit by DC also shows the broad peak uh, related to the amorphous phase. Uh, this indicates that the film structure consists of a fraction of crystalline phase material embedded in a, an amorphous uh, phase matrix. Uh, Altrux the DC deposit films show a crystalline fraction. Their properties do not show a significant improvement uh, compared to the RF uh, deposit film. Uh, this may be related to a very low fraction of crystalline material, so the electro-optical properties of the films are defined by the properties of the amorphous fraction. Uh, okay. Um, in figure 10, show the current density voltage characteristic in forward bias and reverse bias. Uh, uh, of the implement uh, pin didos. Uh, as we can observe, the, the current uh, voltage characteristic in both didos uh, shows the same profile with a little shift in forward bias. Uh, this suggests that the electrical charge transport is due to the same conduction mechanism, and the shift is related to the difference in the series resistance associated with the ETO film's resistance. Um, in reverse bias, the diodes require high electric fields to reach the maximum current. Uh, this is because at this condition, it depends on the minority carriers. Um, considering that the optical and electrical properties of the intrinsic amorphous silicon carbide layer and the low electric field applied we can deduce that the charge transport is related to, to the bulk limited conduction mechanism, in particular to the pole frame emission and trap assistant tunneling. Uh, this is due to a higher trap density in, in the film. Uh, figure 11 shows a schematic energy band diagram of this mechanism. Uh, well, figure 11 shows the electroluminescence spectra recorded uh, at the maximum current. Uh, we can observe that all the spectra show a maximum center at the same wavelength 
close to 630 nanometers. Uh, the electroluminescence spectra uh, show that at the same current density, the dotted with the ETO film deposited by RF source display uh, a higher emission intensity. This is related to a higher transmittance in the ETO film deposit by, by RF source. Uh, from the transmittance spectra, we can observe that for a wavelength of 630 nanometers, the ETO film deposit by RF shows a transmittance close to uh, 85% while the film deposit by DC shows a transmittance close to 17% for the same wavelength. Uh, on the other hand, at reverse bias, but the diode shows a poor light emission. This is because of less charge carrier uh, injection as current density voltage curves uh, show. Um, the amorphous silicon carbide active, active layer has a wide optical gap of 4.2 electron volts. Uh, several reports relate the, this redshift uh, of the electroluminescence spectrum to a thermalization process in which uh, electrons uh, in the conduction band lose energy as uh, they move through the active layer, reaching deep levels in the conduction band tile states from which they recombine with holes injected directly into the depth levels of balance band. Uh, finally, I will present some conclusions of this work. Uh, all deposit films show with a resistivity in the same order of magnitude being slightly lower in the films deposit by RF. The films deposit by DC show what lower transmittance and optical gap energy relate to a higher oxygen deficiency. XRD patterns show what a crystalline phase material only for the DC deposit film. However, the results show a low concentration of this, so the properties of the material are defined by the amorphous fraction. The current density voltage curves of the DC and RF uh, pin diodes show similar response in forward bias with a small shift related to the difference in the series resistance associated to the ETO electrode. Yeah. Both pin diodes show electroluminescence in forward bias with a maximum centered at uh, 630 nanometers. Uh, it was proven that ultra devices implemented with ETO film deposit by RF have a better performance. It is also possible to use the films deposit by DC for this purpose. Uh, that is all, and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Juan Ramon. Uh, questions? Okay. No. Okay. Uh, two questions. One is uh, how about uh, amorphous silicon carbide? You say about P type. What uh, what is uh, dopant, and how oh. did you dop with it? Yes. Uh, for P layer, we use um, Divoran during the deposition, and for N layer, we use phosphine as dopant. Okay. Ah, just uh, passive the deposition. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, next question. Uh, <clears throat> uh, how about composition of ETO? I mean, stoichiometry should be 90 to 10 percent between indium oxide and tin oxide, but did you uh, test with, with any method? I don't know, OJX, PS, EDS, or something like that. Yes, for this work, uh, we don't do the elemental composition uh, characterization. 
Yes, but I don't know really what is the the composition of of our Ito films. Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay. No, I'm nothing. Okay. Well, thank you very much again. Thank you. That's next presentation. <clears throat> Juan Ramirez Rios. Uh, his presentation is devoted to luminescence defect in zinc oxide thin films, effect of deposition temperature and thermal treatment. Uh, please, Juan Federico. Thanks for the presentation, Doctor. Um, can you hear can you hear me? Can you hear me? Excuse me? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks. Okay. Uh, can you say my presentation in full screen? Okay. Yes. Okay, thanks. Um <clears throat> good afternoon, everyone. I am Juan Ramirez. I am going to present conference entitled luminescence defects in zinc oxide films, effect of the deposition temperature and thermal treatment. So the contents of this presentation is first, uh, I, am spoke, I am speak about the Wurzit crystal lattice of zinc oxide, and I am, uh, I am going to speak about the basics, about the, the characterization of this work. It is the X-ray diffraction, photoluminescence spectra, and uh, the, finally, I am speak about the results of the characterization of the zinc oxide using this characterization, varying the temperature at the moment of the deposit of these films by air F sputtering, and uh, the effect of different thermal treatment of these films. And the <clears throat> about the crystal, what's it crystal that is of zinc oxide? Is, is shown in this figure. In this figure, we, uh, we can see that this is hexagonal structure. And when we deposit of this film at equilibrium thermal, can see an, a growth in this direction. This direction is the, uh, the preferred plane. Uh, this is the preferred orientation of growth or, 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 or preferred orientation of the deposit. And uh, this, uh, this direction is 002, and this is the vertical direction, uh, how you can see in this figure, and this is the preferred plane. So about the X-ray diffraction basics, uh, the X-ray diffraction basics use the black condition. The black condition is basic, basic is uh, use the constructive interference when it is present. And this is the mathematical formulation of this bra condition. And this bra condition use the wavelength of the X-ray incident, and you and you can say uh, you can use the, the the distance between the planes or interplanar distance, what is d, and uh, different angle present different or or pres uh, present different uh, uh, planes in the crystal. At, and the angle uh, angle uh, theta. But uh, near this the Bragg the condition, we have a Gaussian curve. This Gaussian curve is uh, this Gaussian curve can be modeled. Uh, but for for example, in this case, we have different planes correspond to different angle of the X-ray diffraction. And for example, this. This peaks uh, in this animation can be seen uh, on, on one of these peaks. For example, the plane corresponds to the planes in the direction 1, 0, 3. <clears throat> so, uh, this Gaussian curve can be modeled by this, this mathematical expression. This mathematical expression depends on the maximum of the intensity uh, and the, the 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 size of the crystal and the wavelength of the incident X-ray and the angle of the, the, the of, of, and the angle that that um, have the the Bragg condition and depends of this theta theta is the the width 
uh, this is a mathematical description in function of the delta. But the important in the characterization of the X-ray diffraction is the full width okay. at half maximum. The full width at half maximum is the half is the, is the width at the middle of the of the of the maximum of the X-ray diffraction peak. And you can use this to uh, determine the, the the crystal size. In this case, the crystal size depends of the number of the planes and the and the interplanar distance it is d and uh, if you reduce the crystal size by the reduce of the number of the planes we can see an, an increment of this of this width of the width of the of the gaussian peak and uh, it is can be um, relation uh, by this uh, mathematical expression it is the typical Serre equation this Namit-Scherer equation, but on the other hand, we can apply uh, this in this in this in this crystal is apply and stress. We can reduce this this crystal size. Uh, we can reduce the crystal size due to the stress and can be modeled by this other expression. In this other expression, uh, you you uh, we use the stress and the Joule modulus. And uh, this, this um, both both the Scherer equation and the dependent and the and the and the stress can use in this expression. This expression is the wilson hall approximation. Uh, take account uh, the okay, uh, you can obtain by this the the crystal the crystal size and the stress of this uh, phase crystal. Uh, excuse me, uh, crystal phase. So about the photoluminescence spectral basics, uh, but uh, for the oxygen oxide, we can uh, apply it an, an excitation, a wavelength excitation, in this case is ultraviolet. Uh, we apply this ultraviolet, apply, uh, ultraviolet uh, um, light. Uh, we can say an, an excitation of the electrons. It is passed to the balance band, to the conduction band. And the more important of this characterization is can uh, it is uh, it is able to identify different defects in, in the material. So, for example, you can say uh, for uh, see you can say uh, these defects present uh, in this animation, the blue, or green, or red anim or, or red uh, emission depends on the defects in the in the material. So about the zinc oxide deposition at different temperature using the RF, the RF uh, sputtering, uh, this is an <clears throat> this is an graph uh, where uh, the, the RF sputtering uh, the argon ions impact the target of the material. The material in this case is zinc oxide. Uh, the uh, so we can obtain uh, a film. In this case, we obtained uh, approximated uh, five, uh, five, uh, five thin nanometers thin, uh, thick of zinc oxide. And the first experiment is uh, in the first experiment we uh, we use different uh, substrate temperature during the deposit. We use one hundred. Celsius degrees, 300 Celsius degrees, 500 Celsius de degrees, 700 Celsius degrees. Uh, so uh, for the 100 Celsius degrees, this is the less temperature of the deposit. Uh, we can say the, the basal plane, the basal plane is 002. But when I increment this temperature, we can say an increment of this basal plane and the maximum is, uh, is at uh, 700 Celsius degrees. And this is the, this is the basal plane. And this, is, uh, and this indicates that the improvement of crystallinity at uh, one, uh, 700 Celsius degrees. And when you use these peaks for each sample de deposit at different temperature, we can obtain this graph, uh, the, the graph uh, that I am show in the in the right of the slide, and when uh, increment the temperature, uh, 
produce an reduction in tensile stress as the position temperature as the position temperature is increased. <clears throat> so about the the photoluminescence spectra characterization we can obtain at when I have low temperature deposition, we have an um, emission in the in the visible of the spectra. Uh, in this case, this peaks is centered, approximated in the yellow orange. The, the wavelength corresponds to the yellow orange due to the transition of this electron uh, through the DPEX. And when I am increment the deposition temperature, we can obtain a direct transition. This direct transition uh, is related is related to the less DPEX in the field. And we can uh, say an arm relation what the X-ray diffraction characterization and the photoluminescence, photoluminescence uh, characterization. In, in this case, uh, less um, <coughs> Less stress, it is less defects, is related white direct transition, uh, direct transition uh, for the photoluminescence. And this indicates less defects for deposited at 700 Celsius degrees. So, above the zinc oxide of the thermal different, thermal different thermal treatment, this is the <coughs> This is the X-ray diffraction and the photoluminescence for the sample deposited at 700 Celsius degrees without thermal treatment. But uh, in this case, after the thermal treatment for two hours at nitrogen environment at uh, nine, uh, 900 Celsius degrees, we can see an increment of non basal plane. non basal plane it is in, in this case is 103. Uh, increment this intensity, this uh, relation why the defects, increase the defects, and in the other hand, for the photoluminescence, is relation why the defects. Uh, the defects uh, in this case uh, is uh, oxygen vacancies, oxygen vacancies related why the photoluminescence spectra centered in the two, uh, two three electron volts. And uh, the thermal treatment and at um, 1000 Celsius degrees, we can see an increment of this non basal plane. And this indicates an increment of the oxygen vacancies in the, in the sample. And uh, finally, we thought and wait thermal treatment for two hours at nitrogen environment. We use the relation of the peaks in the Peers using the X-ray diffraction, uh, we use the non-basal plane respect to basal plane, the basal plane is 0, 0, 002, and we use the relation between the uh, uh, visible peak and ultraviolet peak, and it is uh, the visible peak is related by the defects, and the ultraviolet peaks is related by uh, sample without defects. And we can see uh, the same, um, this curve is similar. And uh, this indicates that the increase of the temperature produce uh, defects, mainly oxygen vacancies. So uh, the conclusion of this work is, uh, the first conclusion is William Kalaporovac to uh, suggest that the shared equation is recommended when it is certain that the stress is low because the strain modifies the X-ray X-ray diffraction peak width. Uh, the second conclusion at the position temperature of uh, 700 Celsius degrees allows to obtain the highest photoluminescence in the ultraviolet band, as well as 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 well as the 002. This is the basal plane, most intense. And the the relationship between the photoluminescence and X-ray diffraction for zinc indicates the formation of the oxygen vacancies, which improves a broad photoluminescence bands in the visible region. And higher annealing temperature may condition the selection of the most optimal temperature if, it's, if what is stoked is emission in the visible spectrum. And this is the reference using for this work. 
thanks for the attention i am able for your for con for as well uh, to as well your questions thanks okay thank you very much Juan Federico. Uh, questions? Any questions? No questions. Online. Online. The no. same. Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, again, I have two questions. One is, uh, can you uh, test with or check with uh, X-ray diffraction? relationship between a crystalline fast and amorphous fast of your film okay the in, in this case the, the x-ray diffraction uh, in this case in the x-ray diffraction uh, this uh, the the peaks uh, the width of the peaks uh, is indicate what of the uh, amorphous phase possible possible amorphous phase in the in the in the, in the sample we no uh, we don't take account possible amorphous phase in this in the sample. We using only the peaks and suppose that the crystal the crystal structure of the sample. Okay. Uh, and now a question is uh, about uh, aniline. Uh, you use it uh, nitrogen atmosphere, but uh, result shows uh, that you. You have deficit of oxygen after heating, so maybe uh, or did you use uh, heating in oxygen atmosphere or maybe mixing atmosphere oxygen and nitrogen in order to yeah. avoid de deficit of uh, oxygen and film? Yeah, um, one moment. This is like okay. Uh, we use uh, only uh, plasma argon. Uh, without oxygen ambient oxygen environment because the target is the zinc oxide uh, mm -hmm. we don't need we don't need to use uh, no oxygen no i, uh, I asked about yes yes i asked about heating the last uh, results you demonstrated where yeah. aniline of uh, uh, films in nitrogen atmosphere and photoluminescence for these samples so ah, okay. when you uh, increase the temperature of phenylen, uh, you uh, uh, you have deficit of oxygen, right? No, uh, luminescent spectrum, please. Can you show? Yes, okay. this one. One moment. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, oxygen okay. vacancies. Yes. Yes, uh, you use uh, the environment, environment when well, you use environment uh, nitrogen environment to uh, to avoid the the incorporation of the oxygen of the external oxygen of the of the external oxygen to the to the sample, and we mm -hmm. use uh, the nitrogen environment and the re, and the reduction of the oxygen in the sample that is uh, the oxygen vacancy, producing this case uh, defects. Uh, the defects and the defects increment the photoluminescence the the photoluminescence due the oxygen defense and the in the in the visible region okay okay thank you thank you again for nice presentation thanks okay so uh, Good yeah. ah, yes. mm -hmm. afternoon, everybody. Okay, we can continue with the next presentation by Arturo Sarmiento Reyes. The title of the presentation is Novel Modeling Methodology for Membrane Tip Devices for Circuit Design and Simulation. I don't know if it's Okay. Yes. Yes. Please.
Y podemos saber que está con el mando. Y va a estar en proceso. ¿Estás en ¿Estás en ¿Estás en ¿Estás en ¿Estás como un asistente, como un tolerador? ¿Sí? ¿Es un micrófono? Hello, Arturo, Arturo, sí, Arturo. Can you hear us? No, está conectado, pero no lo contesta. Bueno, nos pasamos al siguiente. Hello, Arturo, can you hear us? Podemos poner a Shock. Hello, Ángel. A Shock. Yeah, Hello, can you hear Esther, me? A Shock. Can you hear us? Yes, okay. I can hear you. Ángel? Yes, a Shock. Okay. Okay, so maybe I can Ashok. start and maybe he can do the next, no? Yes. Let's come down. Okay, a Shock. Yes, we can change the turn. You can okay. start. Okay, let me present it, present you. Okay, the next presentation is is an application of vanadium oxide thin films as window layer in CIC is E thin film solar cells a computational computational study. Please, Ashok. Can you see the presentation? Yes. Okay. Hi everyone. So the title is already Dr. Ankel has told uh, told everyone so i will start from the outlines so the outlines uh, included the introduction objectives numerical simulation simulation details results and discussions conclusion and acknowledgement starting from introduction so uh, this section so we are discussing about the solar cells or well, uh, solar energy can be harnessed from the solar photovoltaic devices containing the semicond semiconductor semiconductors. So these photovoltaic devices are classified in different generations, uh, first generation, second generation, third generation, and fourth generation. First generation is related to the silicon-based solar cells, wafer-based silicon uh, solar cells, and also the uh, III, B, sing junctions, uh, single junction solar cells. And the second, gen second generation is also called thin film solar cells, which include copper, indium, gallium, selenide, cadmium, telluride, uh, amorpha silicon, and castrite. The third generation is including the emerging concept, which is also includes disensitized solar cells, quantum dot solar cells, organic solar cells, perovskites, and multijunctions or tandem. And finally, the fourth generation is hybrid or combined solar cell, you can say, organic, inorganic, metal oxide, car carbon, carbon based solar cells, graphene, graphene, and its, its derivatives. So in this section, uh, we are focusing on the CIGC thin film solar cells. Why, you know, like the question arises, like uh, why I have selected this? So all the solar cells, all these um, generations has, have developed mainly for the development uh, to reduce the cost and improve the solar cell, solar cell efficiency. However, all these solar cells have some benefits and some drawbacks. But in uh, but in CIG thin cells, solar cells also have the similar the, it has uh, some drawbacks and uh, as well as some benefits. But the benefits uh, the CIG thin solar cell has many as compared to the drawbacks. However, uh, some precise investigation is needed to get uh, 
to to obtain the high efficiency but its benefits benefits are the it is direct and flexible brand gas and uh, it it is uh, the materials the cigse uh, contain high absorption coefficient and uh, also it can but up to now the record efficiency is 23.6 percent for the one centimeter square cell and 20, uh, more than 20 percent efficiency for the large large area solar cells or you can say um, uh, 527 percent square and uh, the another benefit is excellent stability uh, CIGC, cigc material contains uh, highest stability uh, compared to other other semiconductor materials it also contains high resistance resistance and finally the, it can it can manufacture monolithically interconnected modules so it, it it is really promising for the solar cell technology the basic uh, structure like it includes substrate normally used glass back contact normally the molybdenum molybdenum back contact cigc uh, absorber layer cigc base materials uh, and the buffer layer cds or other type of end type material zinc oxide also which is called window layer and, and then front contact so this is the basic concept like to to harness the solar energy the main the work what we have will obtain is the pn junction diode which will obtain from the observer layer and window layer or n type material no p type and n type which we'll discuss later so in these sections what we are going to include is the vanadium oxide so uh, so start some introduction about the vanadium vanadium it adopts uh, different oxidative states which is different from the color crystal structure and chemical which is we can see from the left side right side sorry right side in the in the figures that different different oxidation state and different materials different uh, co compounds so different materials no so in vanadium oxide you can it can we can find a single valence compound such as bo b2o3 bo2 b2o5 and also mixed compound like between them b6o13 b10 o24 among them what we are going to discuss is b2o5 so why b2o5 like we are including the window layer uh, for the cigc thermal solar because it contain high high conductivity and wide band gap compared to the cigc uh, p type absorber material and also uh, most chemically and thermally stable so that's why we are uh, choosing the b2o5 material so here we, what we are doing is uh, simulating the cigc solar cells so numerical simulation is a theoretical modeling that integrate the real life problems into virtual machine environment like a computer it uh, it uh, can interpret the semiconductor behaviors uh, as well as like uh, semiconductor behaviors uh, and properties so why numerical simulations like we include the solar cells we can do that experimental no but the doing the uh, simulation can provide ideas like it is cheaper and quicker it, it, is, it is easy to optimize it can interpret the semiconductor device physical phenomena and behaviors it uh, designed to solve basic semiconductor equations and predict outcome so the most important is it can predict the outcome so it is so that it is easy to do the experimental work. experimental work so like uh, the work experimental work without knowing and with knowing is like a vast difference no that's why the numerical simulation can help to design the experimental activities so the objectives of this work is like uh, we are going to, we are, uh, like in this work uh, b205 semiconductor is in, included in the solar cells and uh, their properties such as thickness uh, thickness carry concentration and uh, band gap of the cigsc and thickness and characterization of b205 and thickness and carry concentration of zinc oxide why thickness and carry concentration we are focusing the because these these parameters are mainly a uh, correlated with the cost as well as the device performance that's why we uh, here in this section we are only focusing on the thickness and carrot concentrations finally the the solar cells with including the b205 is optimized to get the maximum efficiency as possible and in the simulation details uh, we have included the scaps the solar cell capacitance uh, simulator which is one dimension solar cell, solar, uh, solar cell simulator and it uh, it can it can be it can be performed in the windows and freely you no know? and it is also free uh, free to all the scientific research the 
here we have included in the left side the conditions what we have applied for the for and modeling the solar cells the solar cell spectrum of am 1.5 g like uh, and the temperature and 300 kelvin and the parameters that we have already told that in these sections and the structure what we are applying in our our work is this that in figure the word which include back contact cig azure layer b2 fiber over layer jingle cell window layer and front contact and in the right side we have uh, we have um, we have included the parameters what which we have used in the uh, while doing the simulations these parameters are mainly mainly uh, we have taken from the our previous um, previous published research work so that's why like we like this one is with design and the only difference is the like uh, what the parameter is b205 so in the disc result and discussion sections like uh, first we have um, checked the uh, different properties of cigs earlier since the cigs material is uh, the the mostly the band gap like uh, it can be varied from 1.0 to 1.7 so we also include the band gap for this set for the sections so initially what we have to done is like in figure a like here you notice that we have buried the thickness of the cigs observer layer from one to six micrometer and and from the results in the table we have shown the open circuit voltage short circuit current density field factor and uh, efficiency so here the efficiency is very slightly increasing however the the increment is due to the increase in the source of current density by absorbing the photons now with increasing the thickness the absorption of photons will also increases and then in the second sections what we have varied is the band gap so band gap varied from 1.0 to 1.7 so uh, as i mentioned earlier so it can be tuned the band gap value so here the band gap value is directly directly related uh, or impact the BOC value. So you can see here with increasing the BOC also increases. And uh, with increasing band gap, the uh, short circuit current decreases because with the increasing band gap, the, uh, the energy required to, to excite the electrons, or we can say um, energy, photon energy is higher. So in that high energy is very less as compared so that the absorption of the photons is very less in higher band gap case. That's why the short circuit current density is decreased. And finally, here we can see the after the 1.4 and 1.5 electron volt, the band, the efficiency is increases slightly and finally decreases. So we have obtained the optimum band gap 1.4 to 1.5 in between. And finally, the concentrations, like uh, as we know, the concentration can related to uh, can can impact, which is. Uh, which is the charge carriers, no? So it can impact the recombination process. So here we have varied from 10 to power 15 to 10 to power 17. With increasing the concentrations, uh, what we have is increasing the BOC and also the short circuit current density. Sorry, short circuit current density decrease. And here we have the optimum, what we have is 10 to 1 in 10 to power 16 centimeter per meter cube the, for the CIGC absorber layer. For higher case, sorry, for higher concentration, the, the charge carrier concentration, the and the recombination centers will increases. That's why the, it decreases the performance, device performance. And next, we we check the properties of B2O5 buffer layer. And here we have varied from since the buffer layer should be very thin, uh, in order to pass the photons and also reduce the uh, series resistance, so that these two can can impact directly to efficiency so decreasing the photon the absorption of photons can impact the source of current and open circuit voltage and uh, and the series resistance increasing series resistance uh, can, can impact directly to field factor which decreases the field factor value and as a result so efficiency will decrease so uh, here we have a uh, very very less like uh, Although it is 25 to 150 nanometer of B2O5, and here the efficiency is it slightly increases the increasing like up to 150, and because the well with high high uh, thickness it can it it will decrease because due to the decreasing increasing the series resistance and also um, absorbing the photons in the in the buffer layer, but in this case. Uh, it is slightly increases 
uh, while it is increases up to one after 50 nanometer it is slightly increases which might be due to the the absorption photon in the space charge regions and it is slightly in, in, increases the efficiency however at higher, higher thickness it it can it can impact it can decrease the efficiency in the, uh, in the second B figure fee, we have uh, vary the concentrations from 1.10 to 14 to 10 to 19. Uh, so in the normal case, uh, in the carrier concentration must be higher than the uh, carrier concentration of B205 in the P -N type in the buffer layer should be higher than the C P type CIGST absorber layer. Why? Because the, if it is higher, it can extend the uh, space charges and where we can collect the uh, photons means absorb photons so we can collect the energy okay there's nothing right i can just hear sound okay so uh, it will increase the efficiency that's why it should be higher as compared to the um, absorber layer but if, if it is lower scattered concentration it can absorb the photons so that it, it impact the efficiency so it, it initially it is lower and it is started to decrease increases and uh, here we have obtained the high efficiency is 14.53 for the um, for the 110 to about 10 18 per centimeter cube concentration of b 5 similarly we have varied the parameters of zinc oxide uh, zinc oxide window layer and although we have varied there were little little variations since the zinc oxide is not directly participate in the pn junction formations so although and this thickness should be also lower so, you know, to decrease the um, series resistance as well as to enhance the uh, absorption of photons. And carry concentration should also be higher so that it can it can it can extend the space charges and, and improve the device performance. So after uh, these three sections, we have uh, optimized the best conditions and which we have obtained the open circuit voltage. 825.50 millivolt, uh, source circuit current density 28.32 milliampere per centimeter square, field factor 62.35, and the efficiency 14.58, which is uh, like uh, it, this one is uh, using the B205. So, after these results, we have concluded that uh, like uh, um, we have used B205, we have varied the different parameters of thickness, carry concentration band, band gap for the CIGC material and obtain the IPSIS 14.58. So it shows that the B205 like uh, have a possible to, to get the efficiency, means more than 10%, or almost around 15% is is uh, is higher. Although the, this is the simulation simulation work, like uh, you know, while doing experimental, there is a lot of problems for um, the material properties and combining these two mat two materials will be problem of adhesion, adhesion problem and sorry adhesion and uh, all these should be very careful while doing experimental activities. But why will this information like the only thing is we know like uh, what parameters should should focus first no then later we can vary the different parameters to enhance to get better conditions but initially we can start the, the experimental work and obviously it can reduce the consumption of time and resources i would like to thank to uh, CSA, CSA, the organizers ifunam and the staff and all the the groups of our our research group and especially thank you thank you for everyone who is, is also listening there and in in virtual mode thank you okay thank you uh, ashok kadikari uh, questions online no okay yeah okay one question also okay please Okay. Yes, uh, when you do simulations with a simulation, it is very easy to change parameters, but what uh, is needed is to use the experimental values, the, the real values that you may have. And uh, in this case, uh, you are trying to simulate the 
vanadium oxide as a buffer layer. But uh, you say uh, uh, we, we will change the doping in this uh, vanadium oxide layer. Uh, how would you do it uh, experimentally? Okay, for for doping, doctor. Uh, well, experimentally, we can like uh, uh, like in my experience, what we have, I'm doping with the other other material, other oxide or metal by using the uh, ball milling. Like for example, we we can we are what we are doing is mixing the ball milling method. The powders we mix and very well, and then after we are making like uh, for example for thin film, we use spotting. So we we prepare targets for that. And prepare. Uh, we deposit thin film by sputtering. The other other uh, options, like might be the the chemical bath deposition method, so that we can uh, we use different precursor materials and also can dub this vanadium oxide thin film. Doctor, do you have any result trying to obtain different uh, carrier concentrations in vanadium oxide? <laughs> yes, like uh, character concentration, like uh, we can like vary by, for example, uh, we can vary the by varying the precursor con concentrations, or like uh, you can you, you already said like uh, dropping the other elements or even other metal oxide. No, so you can it can or combining two or three metal oxide or you can say hybrid material. Yeah, okay. Can. Yes, perhaps. Thank you. Thank you. Doctor. Okay. okay, one Thank question. You. Thank you, Dr. Rankin. There's one. Okay. Yes, I have one question. Yes, please. Okay. Did you fabricate the, the complete structure of the solar cells in order to compare the results with the with the obtained with the simulation or not yet? Not yet, not yet. But I have started to like fabricate using the CDS like initially, but yeah, this one is the new concept. So that maybe I will in future, if I have a uh, good chance, then I can start to work on this. Okay, okay, thank, thank you, uh, Ashok. Thank you for the opportunity, uh, okay. Dr. Rankin. Okay, well, I think we can continue with the previous presentation. I don't know if yes. uh, uh, Arturo Sarmiento. Can you hear us? He's in online, but I don't know. He didn't hear. He's online. Maybe. You... Yes. Yes, but he. <laughs> Yes. Are you there? Yes. Are you there? He messes that I, he can hear it. But maybe he, I don't know. We cannot hear. Yeah, but we need hear. Yeah. <laughs> maybe like we can say that like uh, he can send uh, his presentation in to you your your G email so that you can do it from here and he can speak from there. I don't know. He is not speaking there. Yes, but we need to to hear it in the camera. <laughs> I can hear you. Excuse me. Okay. Can you? Uh, but I don't know if I. Let me see. Can Let you share see. your presentation? Yes, I have my presentation, and I've sent the presentation in the morning. Okay. Let but, me see if but, if I can. Yes, if you can upload, it's okay. Let me see. I am I am on the on the meeting chat. So 
I, I have been writing <laughs> to you, but uh, I cannot, uh, I don't receive any response. Okay. Let me see. Yes, I am. I am right now sharing. You can hear yes, me, please. Yes, we, we we can hear you, but we can see the presentation. Yes, I, I cannot. I am not able to to share. Maybe Angel, you can present from there the computer because he's also already sent to you, so you can present there and he he will talk from there. No. Perfect. Thank you, Adikari. That's what I wanted. Yes. The, the, yes. I am so sorry. No, la memoria que le hicimos un momento. ¿Tienes una mano? No. ¿Tú tenías? Ajá. No sé. Creo que te la regresamos, ¿no? No sé si es esta, es que tengo la duda. Sí, porque ese rato no está. Ahí vi 113. I'm so sorry. ¿Tú tienes que no me la envío? 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 ¿Tú tienes que no me No, 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 Ok, thank you very much. R. Gómez. R. Gómez. Ay, Gómez. Ok. El chat para que. ¿El chat se puede mandar? Sí. O en el chat. Bueno, puede pegar ahí, ¿no? Oh. Or you can send to me also, I can say directly share here. Asok Eddy. Or Silvestre Point. Let me see. Let me try. Let me try this one. Okay. Okay. R. Gomez. R. Gomez. Okay. Okay. And I will see, I will see if it's possible to send it by by the chat. I okay. Don't really know. I In fact, I am possible. using. Yes. Okay, let me see yes. because in fact it is it is no, possible to okay. I lost you guys. Let me see. Okay, I'm here. Let me see, let me see. Let me see. Okay, if I able to buy the shock is an amount of mail. No, 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 I cannot I I cannot go I cannot uh, send it by the by the chat. Send, I, send it to R. Gomez. I, 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 yes, I, I, have I, the... I, I send it. I, this is already uh, done. I send it. Yeah. Yes, yes, to R. Gomez. I can see it. I can see it. Yeah. Probably it's very low. Very slow. It's, it's internal. Or you can send me, send to me. I already put okay. the, my ID. Okay. Did you wanna... Excuse me. Okay, just a moment, please. There you go, Adikari. I hope I hope it's it's gone. Can you hear me, Adikari? 
Yes, but it's still not coming. But maybe I, it is in waiting. Okay, let me see my my sent file. It's okay. Dear. Maybe in junk file. Maybe I will check. Delete it. Jarocho, es Jarocho, de email. Jarocho, at in a hoy. Jarocho. Yes? You got it? Yes. Okay, thanks a lot. Aquí está. Descarga. Ahí está. Descarga. Dele aquí. Aquí está. Descarga. Apparently, I have my camera and my microphone on. Can you see me? Yes. Okay, thanks a lot. Yes, that's it. That's it. Okay. Okay. Can I start? Okay, we can continue with the next the next presentation. Um, novel modeling methodology for memory chip devices for circuit design and simulation. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I, I am so sorry for the delay. Um, this is a work from the PhD thesis from Jesus Jimenez Leon. He's actually working already at the, at the industry in semiconductor devices in, in Mexico. And, and, and I got presenting one of the last results of his uh, PhD uh, investigation research. Uh, I will start by an introduction. Then I go to the compact modeling methodology for, the, for these devices, which are memory restores the so-called memory stores or memory stiff uh, memories. And then we apply the methodology to classical memory stiff models. Finally, some results, and this is a typo. And finally, we go to the, to the conclusions. Let me, let, excuse me for this. Okay. Um, due to, to, to the problems when, when scaling the, the dimensions of transistors in current uh, technology nodes, uh, there are there there are in the in the new years new concepts and developments regarding how to extend the use of silicon and in in designing new new uh, circuits with devices smaller and smaller. This is what is called the Murphy's law. In or there are already several proposals. One of them is given in in figure figure three and figure figure four, which is the resistive uh, memories. And Professor Chua was uh, 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 saying that this is in fact uh, memory store devices. Those are memory store devices. And the next, please. We are in the in number four, okay. And so we go. Can you hear me, please? Are you are you listening to, to me? Okay. The next part, please. Um, memory store modeling since the let's say the discovery of the memory store as a, an actual device. In 2008, uh, memory store modeling has uh, has gone through a, a huge de development because more and more models have been around in the last years. Uh, these uh, models are usually um, developed either from experimental results or from describing the ordinary differential equation that um, describes the, the, the transport mechanism of the device. 
uh, this is the this has two two variants the linear uh, mechanism and the nonlinear mechanism mechanism and this is in fact the problem the nonlinear mechanism is quite closer to the actual device but it has the problem that the the mathematical functions involved in the window function that is used to convert the differential equation into a nonlinear differential one uh, brings problems when we are trying to obtain a model that can be used for circuit designers and for circuit simulation applications. Uh, the main form to do to achieve this is by using a resist uh, a system of equations that people that is uh, used to deal with control systems uh, can recognize in the equation one we have the state equation which is a first order derivative and in the second uh, equation we have the output equation equation which uh, relates the state x with the uh, input uh, and output variables okay so in the end when we combine these two equations to obtain the memory stiff equation of the device that can be used in circuit applications okay the next please uh, so in a kind of uh, of uh, motivation for this work uh, the approaching modeling task in an is a problem of uh, a, a tackling tackling the the problem the the, the procedure to obtain the memory stiff equation in a very well established methodology okay if we are able to obtain simpler equations we can use this in the final goal which is uh, circuit simulation electrical circuit simulation the next please the methodology consists in this procedure okay we obtain the experimental data in case we we start by this and we compute the the q and phi q is the electrical charge and phi is the flux linkage variables and we compute this by um, simply integrating the voltage and the current of the of, of the the measure, measurements and we approximate a constitutive relationship and find the conductances the conductance which is the mem distance in fact or mem conductance uh, expressions we calculate an error and in the in the paper the definition of the error we used is uh, fully described i won't go that that very in detail so and then we obtain the high level implementation the next please okay this is uh, the treatment we have in this case is the original stroke model this is uh, from 2008 and it's a very simple model the so-called uh, uh, coupled resistor uh, resistor model in which uh, one is, uh, describes the 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 on variable the on resistance and the other one has the influence of the off resistance and everything comes out from the equation four which is the the differential equation that describes the linear mechanisms of the uh, transport uh, of the device. Okay, the next, please. We have this, and from this we obtain the 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 actual uh, relationship in the mapping from v of q, which is this expression. And this is the model that uh, is, uh, is uh, given by Strukov. But however, this has functions that cannot be used or incorporated in some um, 
circuit simulation program, uh, programs such as SPICE. So what we do is from this, the next please, we extract the next please. We extract the, the state equation, the, the, the previous one please. Uh, that thank you, and you, we we de derive the the state equation, and we go to the final port equation. This equation m of q is in fact the membristans function with the values in equation eight that can be used in a high level definition that can be used for circuit designers in circuits that we call hybrid circuits that in that use normal electronics such as MOS transistors and membristors. And in in the figure, figure nine, we see the the, the hysteresis loop of the of the, the device in with the calculated uh, points that we have from from our methodology. The next, please. And we, we have the same methodology and we apply this to the biolic, biolic uh, model. The biolic model, look at the equation 12. The equation 12 uh, incorporates a lot of problems when regarding the, the, the determination of the model. Uh, we are able to obtain it, but we can we cannot use those equations, the obtained equations, in circuit simulation. The next, please. So we are methodology. We obtain first the the fee, the mapping, the, the equation in the in the plane Q phi, which is the the plane that describes describes the uh, the, the model in the original variables variables that uh, Professor Chua stated. The next, please. From this, we obtain again this, this using the state variable dex description. We obtain the curves, and in this case, because it's a, a, another kind of description, it's not a memristance. What we obtain is a kind of conductance. So, or mem conductance to be perfectly clear, we obtain the equation 16, which relates the, the current as a function of the voltage through the, the equation above, which is G of phi, which is the mem conductance of the device. And again, we obtain the, 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 the points from our uh, expression compared with the model, the original model. The next, please. This is an another uh, another process that describes the um, the mechanism of the of of transport in the in, in the device, and this is a combination of tunneling and short short key transport, and this is given in equation seventeen, and as a result we obtain the current through the device as a function of the of equation 18 and the the, the values of the parameters are uh, fully described in the in the paper okay the next please and in this uh, form we obtain through q fitting the the the, the equation 19 which incorporates an exponential, okay? From this exponential, we have to, to go back to the original expression as a function of uh, voltage and current, and we go to the next, next slide, please. Here again, we obtain our expression, and we, we see that the, the original model in blue differs from our, uh, or we differ, I have to say we differ from the original model uh, in the in the corners of the of, of the hysteresis loop because 
that's the place where the fitting procedure is under more stress, let's say, okay? And we have the expression given in 2021, 20, okay? The next, please. Uh, how we measure, how we close, we are with respect to the original models is through the figure or merit figure, which is called the, the mean absolute percentage, which is a very well-known method. But because we are dealing with, uh, with cure fitting, we have to do it at every time, at, at, at every point, excuse me. The next, please. And here we have those errors for the for the the three models we we present, and in fact, as we, as we expected, in those cases where the the cures are let's say more steppy, we do have more problems with the with the error, and also in the cases when the values are very very small, which is at the beginning of the cures. Okay, but th this is something we have to deal. But the the nice thing is that the the obtained uh, formulas can be incorporated in in a spice or in a high level high level uh, modeling tool such as a, a very very log R, which uh, allows us to include the functions in in the spice as a kind of uh, uh, routine that can be called during the simulation process. The next, please. Okay, the, those are the the same for the other the other curve, which is the 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 voltage and the currents. The next, please. Finally, I will draw some conclusions. A procedure to obtain the new modeling equations that describe the, the resistance or the conductance of the switching devices is presented. The procedure allows us to use the ID characteristics that we obtain uh, in, in a kind of a charge flux plane from the analytical expression that can be fitted and then we obtain the final model that can be used in circuit simulations uh, uh, such as spice of any of the, the its relatives. Uh, we have Asia spice at the institute, and we we can use that. Okay, and I guess that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much indeed. And again, I am so sorry for the delay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Arturo Sarmiento Reyes. Uh, questions? Online? No. No? no? Okay, I have one question, uh, Doctor. Uh, you. Yes. You, you present uh, three three models that you compare with the with the extraction that you present. Uh, the error in one is four. Uh, more or less three and 20. And my question is about how do you decrease the, the error for the three model? Okay. If it's possible or not? Okay. Well, uh, in fact, that's a problem with when we are talking about cure fitting. The, the problem okay. is the form, let's say the, the form of the of the cube we have we are trying to fit and in this case the of higher errors everything yes. comes from the original equation we we do have and we have nothing to do with that we have to deal with that the main idea is to use this equation in a kind in a in a circuit simulation and we will see what happened if we use one on a, or another model? Yes. So in the end, what we are trying to do is to have a plethora of models that can be selected within the simulation environment and to see if this is useful 
for one circuit within an application or not. That's that's the main idea. Okay, we have to deal with that that error. I have to admit that. that. Okay, thank you very much again. Uh, not one question. It's okay. Okay. I, thank you. I thank Adhikari for the uh, for the help and all the help to all you guys. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. I think it's the uh, good afternoon, afternoon, everyone. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Okay. See. Okay. Okay.